The Magnificent Jewel Terrace of the British Royal Family The British Royal Family possesses an unparalleled collection of glittering jewel terrace, each with its own fascinating history. While most of the terrace are dainty and elegant, the family also owns several truly grand terrace dripping in diamonds and colored gemstones. These opulent terrace transformed their wearers into majestic queens. This article explores the six most magnificent terrace of the British Royals. 1. The Delhi Durbar Tiara The Delhi Durbar Tiara is undoubtedly one of the most impressive in the royal vaults. Commissioned by Queen Mary in 1911 for the Delhi Durbar, this towering tiara is a supreme embodiment of colonial ostentation. The Delhi Durbar was a lavish ceremony in India where the British monarch was formally proclaimed Emperor slash Empress of India. A spectacular display of royal pomp and circumstance, the Durbar was an extravagant affair filled with ceremonies, parades, and exhibitions meant to showcase British imperial might and glory. Though the British monarchs took great pride in their Indian jewel in the crown, King George V and Queen Mary were the only ones to actually attend a Durbar in person. The others perhaps feared being struck down by a resentful subject's poison dart amidst the ruckus. Eager to properly attire themselves for the momentous occasion, the King and Queen ordered splendid new regalia. King George had an elaborate Imperial Crown of India designed, while Queen Mary turned to the royal jewelers at Garrard to create a stunning purgure consisting of a tiara, stomacher, necklace, brooch, and earrings. The Cambridge Emeralds formed the centerpiece of the purgure, lending the tiara its alternate Cambridge name. The emeralds were part of a catch won in a Frankfurt lottery by Queen Mary's ancestors, Prince Adolphus, Duke of Cambridge, and his wife, Princess Augusta. During the Durbar, the Indian Maharajas showered Queen Mary with additional emeralds to augment the purgure. The emeralds were set in platinum and gold and surrounded by shimmering diamonds. Rising nearly eight centimeters high, the Durbar Tiara is an architectural confection of towering platinum lyres and S scrolls connected by diamond set festoons. Third incorporated large rose cut diamonds from an old Boucheron Tiara along with additional stones gifted by the De Beers Company when Queen Mary was still Duchess of York. Originally, the Tara prominently displayed 10 of the Cambridge Emeralds. It made its grand debut in this form at the 1911 Delhi Durbar. Later, Queen Mary decided to modify the piece. The emeralds were removed and the front of the Tara reworked to showcase the famed Cullinan Yui and Ivy Diamonds. However, the Cullinan stones were themselves soon extracted to make a new brooch. The Durbar Tiara reverted to an open-work lattice design without any huge focal gems. In 1947, Queen Mary loaned the Durbar Tiara to her daughter-in-law, Queen Elizabeth, later the Queen Mother, for a tour of South Africa. Queen Elizabeth Thea herself has never worn the piece. In 2005, she passed it on to her daughter-in-law, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. The Tara remains one of Camilla's prized jewels, complementing her voluminous hairstyles. 2. The Oriental Circlet Tara The intricately beautiful Oriental Circlet Tara resulted from Prince Albert's fascination with Indian design. Queen Victoria's artistic husband sketched the Tara himself in 1851 after admiring the Mughal arches and lotus flower motifs displayed at London's Great Exhibition. Garrett's craftsmen brought Albert's vision to life in 1853. The new tiara fittingly combined his beloved opals with diamonds. Unfortunately, the diamonds proved problematic. They were taken from the family's collection, some originating in jewelry owned by Albert's late cousin, Princess Charlotte. In 1857, the Hanoverian branch of the family rightfully claimed Charlotte's jewels. Every piece had to be disassembled so the Hanoverian diamonds could be identified and returned. Albert's oriental circlet lost a significant number of stones to his German relatives. The tiara was altered to its current openwork design. After Albert's sudden death in 1861, Queen Victoria retreated from public life and more primarily her tiny widow's coronet. But she cherished the oriental circlet as a memento of her beloved husband and bequeathed it to future queens in her will. Her daughter-in-law, Queen Alexandra, made some changes she thought would improve the piece. The opals were replaced with rubies, including the central kabochan, 
Yet Alexandra still seemed not to bond with the piece as no portraits exist of her wearing it. Nor are there any known photographs of the next queen, Mary of Teck, modeling the oriental circlet. It was not until the tiara reached Queen Elizabeth that it was truly embraced and showcased. The Queen Mother adored the oriental circlet and wore it frequently. Her most iconic portraits by Cecil Beaton feature the tiara. She continued wearing it throughout her long widowhood after King George VI died in 1952. As Queen, Elizabeth VI now possessed all the tiaras governed by royal wills like Queen Victoria's but she allowed her mother to keep wearing her favorites like the oriental circlet. After the 2002 death of the queen mother, the tiara finally returned to Elizabeth Thieu. She has worn it only occasionally, such as to a 2005 banquet in Russia. The oriental circlet's time will come again soon when Camilla inherits the right to wear the tiara that Prince Albert specially designed 170 years ago for his beloved queen. Three, the Burmese ruby tiara. Queen Elizabeth II commissioned the Burmese ruby tiara from Gerard in 1973. She wished for a new ruby tiara to replace the beloved oriental circlet surrendered to her mother. The rubies themselves came from a gift by the people of Burma at the time of her marriage to Prince Philip. To provide the necessary gems, the queen sacrificed her own nizam of Hyderabad tiara given to her as a wedding present. The Nizam had instructed Cartier to allow the young princess to choose anything she wished from their collection. Elizabeth selected a floral tiara and necklace made in the 1930s and entirely paved in diamonds. The tiara contained detachable brooches. For a time, Queen Elizabeth II happily wore the Nizam tiara. But by the 1970s, her tastes had changed. She had Gerard dismantle it and recycle the diamonds into her new Burmese ruby tiara. This left no trace behind of the original Nizam gift. The Burmese rubies were a wedding gift from Burma consisting of 96 fine unheated pigeon blood rubies. The Burmese people traditionally believed rubies could protect their owner from 96 diseases afflicting the human body. Their gift conferred their heartfelt wishes for the queen's good health and longevity. She remained active past her 96th birthday, proving the protective power of rubies. Gerard designed the Burmese ruby tiara as a wreath of Tudor roses, with the rubies forming the red petals and diamonds the white. The rubies are set in gold and the diamonds in silver. Queen Elizabeth II loved her ruby tiara and wore it extensively for events and portraits between the 1970s and 2000. So far, she remains the only person to have worn the piece. As it was made specifically for her, the Burmese ruby tiara seems destined to remain with the queen. 4. The Brazilian Aquamarine Terra Queen Elizabeth II also commissioned her Brazilian Aquamarine Terra in the 1970s, turning an earlier aquamarine gift into a full parure. In 1953, the president of Aquamarine Rich Brazil presented Elizabeth with an aquamarine necklace and earrings on her coronation. In 1957, she asked Gerard to craft a matching terra showcasing more large oblong aquamarines fringed with diamonds. Further Brazilian gifts of an aquamarine bracelet and brooch in 1958 and a hair ornament in 1968 led the queen to update the tiara in 1971. She added tiered rays of aquamarines and moved the detachable pendant element from the necklace to the center of the tiara. Queen Elizabeth wore her aquamarine tiara frequently over the decades. She was photographed in it during the state visit to Russia in 1994 and for many other glittering occasions. In 2020, the Royal Canadian Mint even issued a silver coin celebrating Queen Elizabeth E's Brazilian aquamarine terra. The coin's reverse depicts one of the terra's fanned aquamarine motifs decorated with Swarovski crystals matching the sea-colored gems. Like the Burmese ruby terra, Queen Elizabeth Thea remains the only wearer of the Brazilian aquamarine terra. The two tiaras seem destined to be forever linked with Britain's long-reigning and much-loved queen. 5. The Greville Tiara Margaret Greville was a famous society maven in the early 1900s who formed close ties with the royals. She married well and amassed a spectacular jewelry collection, which she bequeathed to her friend Queen Elizabeth upon her death in 1942. The stand-up piece was her Boucheron Honeycomb Tiara made in 1921. 
It originally had a flatter Kokoschnik style top, quite different from its current form. In 1953, the Queen Mother had Cartier rework the five diamond rosette motifs to add height. More diamonds were also incorporated, including Marquise stones. Queen Elizabeth wore her mother's Greville tiara for many years until gifting it in 2005 to her daughter-in-law Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. Camilla wears the tiara frequently, as it suits her hair. The Greville tiara has become her signature piece. 6. The Belgian Sapphire Tiara In the 1960s, Queen Elizabeth II desired a sapphire tiara to complement the sapphire jewelry given to her as a wedding gift by her father King George VI. She found a suitable royal piece in an antique sapphire necklace that had belonged to Princess Louise of saxe coburg gotha Princess Louise of Belgium had a tumultuous life filled with scandal and unhappiness. At one point, her father sold off her mother Queen Henrietta's jewels, including the sapphire necklace, to pay Louise's debts. The necklace made its way through various hands before Queen Elizabeth acquired it at auction. The necklace was irreversibly converted into a tiara, likely by one of the Queen's jewelers. She wore the Belgian sapphire tiara often from the 1960s to 1990s before it fell out of favor for some years. But it made a resurgence in the early 2000s and remains one of her go-to tiaras today. In 2019, Queen Elizabeth II posed for a new official portrait in the Belgian sapphire tiara, underscoring her affection for the piece. The Duchess of Cornwall has also worn the Belgian sapphire tiara on occasion. Each of these magnificent royal tiaras has its own personality and stories woven through British and European history. Passed down through generations and still worn today, they remain true symbols of regal elegance and timeless beauty. The jewelers who originally created them could never have imagined their tiaras would one day adorn kings and queens. Dear friend, if you like everything new about the royal family and don't want to miss all the novelties, subscribe to our channel and like it. By doing so, you take part in our development. We work for you.